Good evening. Welcome to live online worship with St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. I will uh, remind you that I've changed up some of the technology this evening, and so I'm not actually able to see the comments that you're posting on Facebook, but Marie Hughes uh, will be able to see them and she'll read your prayer requests as you post them. And we do invite you nevertheless to uh, let us know that you're there to greet one another and uh, just to share this time online. We do have a bulletin that is posted on St. James website at stjamesscan.org. And I, we will also be announcing the page numbers that you'll find in the Book of Common Prayer if you have one at home and would like to follow that way. I am uh, working with some new technology to try to improve both the sound and the uh, consistency of the video and uh, trying some different things tonight. So we do appreciate your feedback. And along with everything else that I've uh, managed to do, oops, incorrectly, I actually dropped the iPad on the floor this afternoon and broke the cord. So there's always something, <laughs> always something. So we're gonna begin in the Book of Common Prayer on page 116. I'm actually reading this from a different page, so you won't find this particular text. It is not ourselves that we proclaim. We proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For the same God who said, out of darkness let light shine, has caused light to shine within us, to give the light of revelation, the revelation of the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And if you have a bulletin or a prayer book, I invite you to say the words of the confession aloud at home. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Turning to page 117, I invite you to say the responses of the invitatory. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Turning to page 118, if you're following in the prayer book, I invite you to say with me the Phos Hilaron, which begins, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. 
And the voice that you will hear now reading the readings for us is Steve Osborne, and I'm grateful for your presence here tonight, Steve. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. This can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 720. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson tonight is taken from the eighth chapter of Romans verses 26 through 30. This is from the New Living Translation. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are using a prayer book, I invite you to turn to page 119 and say with me the words of the Magnificat, which is the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has, he has cast, cast down, down the mighty from, from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has, he has filled, filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I apologize. I realize I skipped a verse there. The second lesson this evening is taken from the 13th chapter of Luke, verses 20 through, 22 through 30. And this is from the Common English Bible. Jesus traveled through cities and villages, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, will only a few be saved? Jesus said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. Many, I tell you, will try to enter and won't be able to. 
Once the owner of the house gets up and shuts the door, then you will stand outside and knock on the door saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will reply, I don't know you or where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. He will respond, I don't know you or where you are from. Go away from me, all you evil doers. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in God's kingdom. But you yourselves will be thrown out. People will come from east and west, north and south, and sit down to eat in God's kingdom. Look, those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm turning to page 120. If you're using the prayer book, I invite you to say with me the words of the Nunc Dimittis, which is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now Lord, have set, set your, your servant, servant free, free to go in peace as you have, have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, this is actually a set of readings that I... I wish that we were uh, sitting in the same room and we could talk about them because I, uh, I would love to ask some questions and hear what you all think and have to say. I do find it um, curious that these readings are paired in the lectionary because there probably uh, couldn't be a greater um, contrast between the two for the first two readings that are so full of grace and love and God's help and presence and this reading from Luke that is among the harshest that I think uh, we hear out of out of the mouth of Jesus at any rate and so um, I actually want to talk about that just a little bit and wonder with you about some things um, the, I have a suspicion that this particular text strikes fear in the hearts of believers. That when Jesus says, um, many, I tell you, will try to enter the narrow gate and won't be able to, that one of the first things that happens is we worry, is that going to be me? Am I going to try to get in and the door will be closed on me? And I won't even know what I did. I will just find myself standing outside. So I, I want to wonder with you a little bit about what, what actually is the narrow gate? Or why is it that the gate is narrow? And I... Um, a story came to mind. Sadly, I can't remember the punchline, so I'm going to have to make it up. Um, <laughs> probably poorly, but uh, there was a story about a, um, I'll just say it was a, a man who died and found himself at the pearly gates. And St. Peter um, said to him, so tell me what you've done in your lifetime. And the man said, well, I... Um, I started my own business. I was I was very successful, and uh, I I uh, I accumulated a lot of things, and I um, I was very rich and I was very good to my family. And um, Saint Peter said, "Well, um, you're going to actually have to get three points in order to get into heaven, and so far you don't have any." And the man said, "Well." Okay, um, I taught Sunday school for 35 years. I sang in the choir. I, I served down the vestry uh, 10 times and actually was the warden during the hardest transition in the church. 
and I, I always worked at the church rummage sale, and I donated the Christmas tree every year. And I was I tithed my entire life. And um, I, I uh, well, how is that? And St. Peter said, well, well, that's a half a point. And the man said, oh, my God, there's no way I can get into heaven on my own. And the lights flashed and the bells rang and the gates opened and in he went. And uh, I guess the moral to the story is we don't get into heaven on our own. That, that the narrow gate really is God's grace. And that's what we have to know, is that the narrow gate is the grace of Jesus. And it's just a gift. And if we try to get in any other way, we're going to find ourselves disappointed um, because it has to do with, with accepting, really just accepting the gift that has already been given. And that's what we hear. So that's my take on this story. And um, I certainly would be, uh, I'm not going to make it into any great commentaries with, with uh, that little reflection there. But I think that when we come across a really difficult passage like this, we have to put it in the context of everything else we know about Scripture and everything else that we know about God and, and everything that we have read in preparation for this passage from Luke is that God has chosen us and called us and made us right with himself and given us um, glory and the way to receive that is to simply say thank you. Thank you. I'm going to encourage you now to, if you're using a prayer book, to turn to page 120 and let us say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the voice that you will hear now is that of Sister Marie Patricia Hughes, who is going to lead us in the prayers this evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our prayers will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 121, Intercessory Prayers A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant, and grant us, us your, your salvation. salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your, your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. At this time, we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request and those on Zoom to unmute and speak your intercessions. 
I would like to ask prayers for the Francis Chelly's family who's um, will be laying to rest um, a member of their family tomorrow. And also for Frank Reginelli and his family who is, he will be buried on Saturday. The prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A prayer for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. A prayer for our nation. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land. The barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. You, O God, have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you to Steve Osborne and Sister Marie Patricia Hughes for helping to lead worship this evening. We are starting up again a practice that we had last winter and spring, which is to follow this uh, prayer service on Wednesday evening with uh, a prayer room that is available on Zoom. And the link for that goes out at about 5.30, right before this service starts. So you can join uh, that prayer time on Zoom. And uh, there will be trained uh, prayer ministers that will greet you there and will hold your prayer requests in confidence, whether they be for yourself or for someone else. So do invite you to take advantage of that prayer ministry. Another opportunity that we have coming up soon is that uh, All Saints Sunday is November 7th, and we gather names in the church of uh, anyone that uh, people would like to have prayed for, particularly those who have died. And uh, for those of you who we only see online, we would like to, to invite you to participate as well. And the way that you can do that is by sending names into the church office and we'll add them to the list that we read aloud. Or you can simply post them on Facebook on, the, on that Sunday at the time of the prayers and um, so that others will be able to see them as well. I invite you now to join me in saying the words of the general thanksgiving, and if you have a prayer book, that's on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Wonderful to worship with you this evening. Have a good night.